Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. I'm going to be finishing my grandmother's quilt top today, so if you want to see how I accomplish that, please stay tuned. If you've seen the video about the vintage quilts that I found with my mother um, from our family, you will have already seen this quilt. But if you haven't, here it is. This is only part of it. I have it folded over so that you can um, see the, the important things that I want to talk to you about. There's some things that I'm going to consider before I complete this quilt. Um, and I made a list right here. So, um, one thing that's not on my list is thinking about cleaning it. It does have some spots. There's some dinginess right here and right here. Um, and there's a spot, since it was in a black garbage bag, um, it was folded, so there are some issues with that part. Um, but I'm not going to clean it. I'm going to wait until after I'm all completely done. Um, so let's see what else I consider. I've already measured this quilt all the way out. As I said, it is folded over. And it measured 84 by 75. So it's already a good size quilt. Um, the only thing that I need to do is give it a good... Um, area to add a border and actually quilt it down. So I'll be working on that. Um, I'm also going to add a border to the uh, quilt, probably two, to frame it out and give it a good edge for binding. Um, since I'm not 100% sure all the different types of fabric, I'm fairly certain that it's not all 100% cotton. So I know that I probably won't be able to bind it like I normally would. Plus, since it's kind of since it's a vintage. Piece, I want to keep this the inside of it intact and I'll just add on to the edge of it. Um, the first thing, any kind of quilt top you get, I'm sure the first thing you want to do is check for places that need repairs. And I, I did that the other day when I was measuring it. I noticed a spot that wasn't um, sewn all the way. So there are a couple of little parts right here that I have to do before I even attempt anything else. So I'm going to repair that on the machine. This is my grandmother uh, made this, as I said, and she, part of it is um, hand stitched and part of it is machine stitched. So I'm only going to focus on repairing the machine stitch parts. I think that the hand stitching will be fine because I'm going to quilt over it anyway. Um, so another thing that I put on here was straightening up the edge and I'm going to straighten up this edge right here. Um, the I'm going to this edge, I think that it's not perfectly straight, but it'll be straight enough. I can add, I feel comfortable adding a border on here without it, um, without it being too bad. I think I should be able to add a border fairly easily to this side and to the other side. I may have to straighten up this other edge, but um, d these edges that have the where she made these little checkerboard. Um, blocks, I feel like they're pretty good and I can work from those comfortably. So I have to think about um, straightening up that edge and so I will press that out and straighten up the edge. I'm going to straighten it on camera even though I'm nervous about doing that. Um, for the fabric that I chose for um, the borders, I actually went to one particular side, this block right here, and I chose um, some colors that I felt like would be would look nice all the way around. Um, I try to get inspiration from the whole quilt, but like these pieces to me seem a little bit older than the other pieces. Um, it, it's in the spirit of use what you have to make what you want or make what you need. So I can tell that you know if you look at this quilt closely, there are all kinds of different fabrics. But um, Grandma was trying to coordinate them, but she used what she had. So when she ran out, for example, in this block. When she ran out of whatever, she ran out of this red, she put a burgundy there. She ran out of, um, you know, this fabric, she put this little flower there. So it's really um, kind of makeshift and do what you have to. But I pull from these colors. So I have a burgundy. This one was already in my stash. It's from my nephew's graduation quilt. And it's a scroll fabric, which I love, but I think it's going to be... Um, it doesn't really match the era of what I feel like the quilt is. So I'm just going to do a really thin border of this. Then I'm going to add this fabric, which I found. I'm going to do a thicker border 
and these kind of coordinate so well they did before I washed this fabric but I think it I think it'll be a nice complement to the quilt all right so the other thing and the last thing before I get ready to um, add the borders is pressing since I'm not gonna wash this quilt top until I'm finished quilting it um, it's kind of challenging to think about pressing especially in the spots where there's some um, where it's dirty and so I know that I'm not going to press those sections because I don't want to um, press the, the I don't want to heat set that those stains um, but for this part this edge that I know I'm going to have to correct I am going to press these but I'm going to use um, I didn't bring my fabric over here but I'm just going to use some 100% cotton and set my um, iron a little bit lower to press it out um, that's going to be my first step. I'm going to press this whole edge out so that I can um, even it up and then I will um, I'll come back on camera and actually do that even though I'm a little nervous about cutting into grandma's quilt but that's going to be my first step before I add borders. So I'll be right back after I press. I'm getting ready to cut this um, to even this side off, I've already pressed it and I'm just going to cut it off. I know that it's going to be weird and like this part is, gonna, is really hanging over. But I'm just going to cut it and do the best I can with it and see what happens. Here we go. It doesn't really <laughs> appear to be anywhere to line it up nice and neat because of the way that my grandmother's stitches are. So. I'm just going to do my best to get it straight. And I'm going to do it right now live on camera and then I'm going to open it out so we can see what it looks like. So now it's a nice straight edge. Well, I was hoping it would be a nice straight edge. Oh boy. All right, so now it's kind of curved this way. So I'm not sure what to do. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do to fix it. I'm a little sad about it, but we're just gonna make it work. I'm going to use this pink edge since it seems to be shorter as my lineup edge. I'm going to make sure you can still see it. And then when I cut it, I think I'm going to end up cutting on this. So all the brown is going to go away. Let me move it over so you can see it. Okay, you see how now it's curved down like this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the bottom of it here and then I'm just going to line it up and cut it. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we'll see. Let me try it here. So if I line up with the edge, because this edge is straight, I'm going to line it up with this edge. So let me open it out a little bit. So in essence, what I think I'm going to be doing is cutting all this brown off. Okay. So here we go. Line up the edge down as far as I can, but right here. This is probably not the best way to do this, but I don't know the answer. So here goes nothing. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. I finished trying to even it out and it looks like I might have made it worse. But I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to start by adding my uh, one and a half inch border. I think that's how big it's going to be. And I'm going to add it to each side 
uh, the long sides first and then the short sides. So I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. I had to change rooms, but I wanted to um, find some space so I could lay this whole thing out. It, I have the first border on, and if you look on the right, you can see that that border is a little curved because that's where I kind of botched the cutting. But I'm not really going to stress about that too much. I like the way it looks already with the cohesive um, border. But I'm going to add one more border. I'm going to add a 4-inch border on all sides. And then we'll see what it looks like. I've finished putting the second border onto the checkerboard quilt. I really like how it's looking right now. You can still see the part that was curved that I messed up on the cutting. It's still a little bit curved, but I think with the border it looks a little bit better. The quilt itself, of course, because Grandma didn't have a rotary cutter and um, and it's half hand piece and half machine piece, it's just a little cattywampus. And I think that's okay. I think it adds some nice character to the quilt. Hopefully you can see all the ridges um, and maybe I can quilt some of that out, but I'm not going to stress too much about it. One interesting thing happened. I did not buy enough fabric, so I ended up having to pull some more of that scroll fabric out of my stash. So I think in the spirit of the quilt, when you use whatever you have, that's very appropriate. I'm really excited about quilting this quilt. I just need to get the batting, and then I'll do a separate video about how I quilt it. If you have any questions about this quilt or about quilting in general, I would love to answer them. Please leave them in the comments below. I will see you in the next video when we figure out how am I going to quilt this thing. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!